Now, who remember this criminal element presently on your screen? A man who has since been identified as Javan Parcel. This man was taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal rivals in the Sydenham Villa era of Spanish Town. The day when he lost his life, a baby girl, an innocent little girl, lost her life in that brutal onslaught. Due to the carelessness, of course, of our Krasmite Muma. But watch this now. Javan Parcel was laid to rest some time ago. Family members, mother, father, to include his brother presently on your screen, came to lay him to rest. Now the brother is missing and everybody is wondering if it has anything to do with the knockings and clappings of Javan Parcel. The brother, Antonio Parcel, has been missing since Tuesday, February 7th, about 12.15 p.m. So the family members are asking if anyone has any information into the whereabouts of Antonio Parcel. They are pleading to the ones and ones them that took him or if he's out there somewhere. They are pleading to anyone having any knowledge of him that he is nothing like his brother and he is an innocent man. Yeah, man. On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right. Y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one, a blessed and wonderful Sunday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so we can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps. In the morning here we are going to traverse through the streets of the troubled, war-torn, crime-riddled St. James Police Division where a series of knockings and clappings took place over there in the rebel side section of Flankers Mabee, a section known as Church Hill, <laughs> yeah man may I tell you, resulting in the loss of life of a man and the injuring of another prominent member of the infamous rebel side gang, <laughs> yeah man, so watch this now my peeps, over the years you know, and the spot news media do some vlogs and I would have spoken about some things way before it manifests itself. Now on your screen is some rather interesting vlogs that I did sometime in November of 2021 into the New Year's of 2022. So pretty much over a year ago these vlogs was done and the spot news media was criticized and the spot news media was labeled as a troublemaker and stating claims that on the spot news media is adding fuel to fire basically but if you go over and watch these vlogs over the years and we see that a lot of what was said back then manifests itself right now now one of the controversial figure that got himself caught up in that brazen knockings and clappings last night a churchill flanker is known as buffo as in baphomet yeah man may i tell you and you don't know the word baphomet and what that is associated with now this is the controversial figure presently on your screen him get some serious can up can I got to understand that he's still among the land of the living but hanging on by a thread 
And uh, a lot of persons are sending out their well wishes, hoping that he pulls through this one. But uh, this controversial figure is definitely no saint. And also one of those who got caught between being an artist and of course not being the smartest and almost getting brains splash out like a tomatis. <laughs> yeah, man. Another man did the right beside him when time the knockings and clappings go on. That man is presently on your screen and has since been identified as Chris Mowat. No, this man was not so fortunate as he lost his life whilst undergoing treatment in the hospital. Now, I want to go back and really watch them vlog here because them vlog here have a lot of vital information for you. Know, to make you really understand how this warrior really a go on in a flankers, where it a come from, who it a come from, and some of the main perpetrators in this war we are going in the flankers between the libyan gang and between the rebel side gang yeah man may i tell you this controversial figure buffo was definitely mentioned on several occasions and those vlogs is definitely something for you all to go and watch and you see in most of these areas not just in flankers but right across the length and breadth of jamaica most criminal rivals were friends before they became nemesis <laughs> yeah man may i tell you you see the friend turn enemies thing is real also covered a vlog about the libyans and the rebel gang and that was dubbed the friend turns enemies edition so you definitely need to go watch that and pick up from where i left off right there so this controversial figure is presently battling for life in the hospital and on the spot news media will most definitely be keeping tabs on this one as everything surrounding it is fresh so i'm presently gathering all the information to bring it forward to you the regular members of chan public and also members of the diaspora in subsequent newscast yeah man now over there in the neighboring parish of saint elizabeth the place that jamaica calls the bread basket of the island well at least it once was a place that some of us affectionately call it saint best but has rapidly become saint worst now the police in saint elizabeth are probing the loss of life of a man whose body was found with feet bound in mount osborne that is near leeds on the santa cruz to malvern main road on friday so according to the police about 5 30 a.m the body was seen with feet and neck bound on the main road lie down the just so the police report did not say if the body had any visible wounds and the man's identity is still not known at this time the body was removed to the morgue and investigations continue so you definitely know say on the spot news media will definitely be keeping checks on that one and update you as more information is released in subsequent newscast now over there in the crime riddled war-torn violence prone kingston western police division they have been rocked again with two separate murders. The first one took place in the New Lincoln era of the Kingston Western Police Division, where a man was found in the trunk of a car with a portion to can up can up wounds these information is fresh so of course on the spot news media have to do more investigations to get more information and bring it to you in subsequent newscast but we definitely have to mention that kingston western recorded two separate loss of life 
The next fatality took place in the vicinity of the Craft Market, Harbour Street and Port Royal Street, somewhere in that vicinity where it is said that a man who is said to be a Rastafari man was stabbed up by another person in that area. So we definitely will bring you more updates as we get the information in subsequent newscast. Now over there in the Kingston Eastern Police Division, this criminal element who was featured on the JCF Wanted Wednesdays and also featured on Underspot News Media has turned in himself to the authorities. He has been charged with various offences arising out of a knockings and clappings incident on Eastburn Road in Kingston 2 where a woman end up get some serious can up can up wounds during that incident. The Kingston Eastern Police says that 43 year old Marlon Stevenson presently on your screen otherwise known as finger blocks in the criminal underworld. He's from a Rockfort address. He was charged with wounding with intent and knockings and clappings with intent after being accompanied to the police station by his attorney. Reports are that the woman was standing on the roadway with a group of people when she was attacked and canned up by finger blocks. Two licensed firearm holder challenged finger blocks and he fired at them. The men managed to escape injury by the raging knackis and clappis. The injured woman was taken to the hospital where she was treated and released. His court date is being arraigned and his lawyers informed. <laughs> yeah man, so when fire there must must steal. Yeah man, may I tell you, boy start run up and down because boy know say once you start get feature, you know, your deputy officer, your man pick radar and from your drop on them on the radar, you don't know how that might end up walk out or chalk out depending upon how you decide to go with him when him come for you. <laughs> yeah man. So the last thing that me I got to talk about is a woman who poured gasoline on her spouse whilst he slept and set him on fire because she suspected that he was cheating on her. Now the woman in question has since been identified as Sarita Hosen Blair. She was convicted after she pleaded guilty to the charges preferred against her in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston on Thursday to the gruesome murder in 2017 and taking the life of her common-law partner who has since been identified as Kenton Brown. Some of the evidence that was presented against Sarita Blair was a transcript of a deathbed interview by Kenton Brown that he gave to a police constable which he detailed that late night attack. In the statement that Kenton Brown gave to the officer, the statement stated that my uncle wake up officer and find myself by fire and the woman stand up over me. The interview was however cut short, the officer stated, as Brown, who is the father of two, and the children were 8, 7 and 10 at the time, began to shake violently. The constable also stated that the dying man stated, Officer, take care of me two pitney them because them not have nobody at all. The officer stated that Kenton Brown succumbed to injuries four days later. Now, in an interview, the woman who was accused of his loss of life confessed. She stated that they had an argument, stating that she suspected that he was cheating with the caregiver of their children and he declined that he was doing such activities. She stated that they had an argument and he told her to get out of his house. She stated that he went to bed and she went to the gas station, bought the gas, threw it on him and light him. She also told the police that she did not intend to do such a thing. She was not thinking at the time and she did not 
planet but all of that just took place so basically she's saying that she had a temporary moment of insanity right there so so boy may i may tell you my peeps sometimes we hear some little things out the road sometimes we see some little happenings that we never even know for sure what them people really are got through or what them really are thinking of their mind because trust me for you say you love somebody you and the person that share the same bed lie down upon the same pillar and for you to walk to a gas station and go buy the gas walk come back stand up over the man throw the gas upon him at no point and time in all of that somebody never tip you upon your shoulder me at about your conscience that never chip in at no point and time for say yo woman away i go do do not do such a thing but you continued to strike the matches and chew it upon the man and stand up over him and watch him burn boy me i tell you the hearts of mankind has become desperately wicked and as always my peeps a word to the wise is sufficient if you're in a relationship and it's top work for you it is easier you just walk away and call it a day because see it one end up six feet under one end up life imprisonment and who is out there now to be a good parent for those traumatized kids poor me i tell you my peeps but anyway remember to like share subscribe to the channel stay tuned to on the spot news media as i continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast on the spot news media yeah man